All right, so today we're going to take a look at how do you fix when the stroke rate is pegging at 102 strokes per minute or the stroke rate is all over the place. It's jumping from 20, it's jumping up to 60, up to 100, back down to 20, all within several given strokes. Obviously, that is incorrect and we have an issue going on inside the rower. Now, first thing first, always start with resetting both the tablet and the monitor. When it comes to software-based things, software can easily glitch and cause a misreading at any given moment. So reset, turn off that monitor, hold down that power button until it goes off. Also reset that tablet. If upon restarting the problem is still present, then this can only boil it down to three things. We have a problem with the sensor disc. So at the top of this clutch, there's a little sensor disc that spins around every time you pull and there's a little sensor that reads the teeth. You'll see what this looks like here in just a second. So we got a problem with that. We had a problem with the wiring that is actually plugged into that sensor, and that wiring has just gone bad. Happens very rarely, but it has happened. And the third thing that it could be is the actual sensor has been jarred, and it is no longer in the correct position to read the sensor disk. Those are the only three things that could cause a uh, stroke rate to be all over the place and or throwing off the watts like crazy as well. So let's dive into that. All right, now without taking anything actually apart, you can actually access the sensor disk um, a little bit, relatively well, just through this little access door over here. So we just remove that right inside of there at the very top, let me grab a light, you'll be able to see the sensor disk. I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see that. So at the very top there, you're going to see that sensor disc. Uh, now what we're looking at is right up here above. So that very top part right there, right below my fingernail is where we're looking. So when I take a pull of this and I'll rack the handle, I'll pull once, I'll rack the handle, you'll see that top disc still spinning. So you can see that top disc spinning. So that is the sensor disc. Sometimes that one looked pretty, pretty straight. Now sometimes if that is in the incorrect position, so if it's a little uneven, then it will throw off some funky watts. If it's too high, it'll throw off some funky watts. If it's too low, it could throw off or not even read anything whatsoever. Um, so sometimes you just gotta kinda, you could use a uh, flathead screwdriver. So you could just simply use a flathead screwdriver, stick it in there, kind of wedge it, move it around a little bit, see if it's even. But you could also take one pull, get it spinning, and then just kind of lift it with your fingers just a little bit and trying to push it up or push it down depending on based upon your visual, which direction it needs to go. So that's one way. Now let's take a look at actually taking this entire hood off, uh, which will allow you a lot more access uh, to all the internal uh, components there. All right, so to take the hood off, this orange piece right here first, what we want to do, we can lift this rower arm and then just kind of push this little tablet arm right here. Just push it back off of the actual hood. We can, we're going to remove this rower handle. Just get it back here out of the way. That's fine. And then we're going to remove these two bolts up at the top. Now this is a five millimeter um, Allen wrench. So you could just any five mil, millimeter Allen wrench. There's also one that comes in the rower kit. So if you actually need this, we can order it from water rower, but there's good chance it's still in your studio uh, near the rower part. So we'll take these off. Note when putting them back on, there is a ledge. So Maybe a little hard to see, but this ledge right here, there's a ledge that this flat part is supposed to sit on. So that's where the rower handle easily is racked. I'll teach you a secret when we put this back together to make sure you always get that lip lined up at the bottom there. All right, so got these two off. Personally, I always put them on the uh, respective sides. So if I took the left one off, it goes on the left side. Put the right one off, it goes on the right side. I'm going to lift up the foot plate. That's going to reveal and allow you to actually pull the hood 
completely off. So just simply lift a little bit. We're going to slide it back towards the rower foot plate and setting this off to the side. All right. Now, let's get back in there. <clears throat> so this is one thing that could go wrong. This wire right here said very rare, but it's a possibility. Um, so this wire leads to the actual sensor disc. The one with the actual clip leads inside into the back of the rower monitor. So um, also double check that I guess if you're not reading any watts at all, then this could come uh, disconnected or somebody that was working on it, maybe preventing the maintenance person might have uh, accidentally forgot to disconnect that. That happens. Um, so always double check that as well. So now this will give you a lot more access to actually adjust that sensor disc. So here I can actually access it from both sides. So if I wanted to really make sure it was nice and level, uh, just simply remove this hood and that will give you tremendously better access, allowing you to adjust that sensor disc. Now, the other two things it could be, remember that sensor could be off. The sensor is located right below here. In order to get to that, we must remove these two bolts and there's two bolts on the opposite side of the rower here at the very tail end. That's got to come off as well. And this entire top board needs to be removed. So let's take a look at that. All right, so these two top bolts are a four millimeter. So we'll start off four millimeter right here. Let's go ahead and remove these two. But once again, I do my best to keep them on their respective sides. Every screw is has a thread that it prefers because it's already been screwed in there. Um, so if you can help it, it goes in to the same one it went in a little bit easier than a new one sometimes, possibly. Okay, so now we got that off. Let's go on the back side so you can see what we need to remove there. All right, so those two top Screws are what we're going to take out. So this one right here and the same one on the other side. Going back to your normal five millimeter wrench that we used to take off those initial uh, handle bolts. Going to remove that. Now it's going to be a massively long screw. So once you get that out, big long screw, I simply put that on the left side at the front of the rower. Once again, keeping it consistent to the side that it came out on. And let's remove the other one. Boom, done. Those two are off. Now I may remove this top board right here. So let's take a look at that. All right. Let's go ahead and set that out of the way. So a little lift at the front here. Gonna get a little lift at the back. Now these two pulleys sometimes try to come with you. So try to keep those down as much as possible. So don't lift too hard because you might pull those out with you. So you want to do this very gently. If they do come out, it's not the end of the world, but you may need to just reference another rower to get them back in because there's little washers and stuff that go a certain way. So, which is always a good habit to open up just the hood on another one, and that will allow you to make sure it goes back in correctly. All right. So you can see they came out right there. So for video purposes, I will show you how it should be. But if you can refrain from it, refrain from letting those come out as much as possible. Try to get that pulley off. So you can see how it just start to fall apart. All right, there we go. Okay, so got the wire, disconnect it. Okay, there's the two pulleys. 
So I'm simply just going to turn that upside down. Now what you need to see is this sensor right here. So sometimes that will get pushed up. Um, sometimes it'll have a bunch of dust on it that could throw it off as well. Um, so double check this. It should be solid, should be secure, shouldn't be able to wiggle it around at all. So a little bit closer so you can see it. So that sensor right there. Now what that's reading is all these little teeth. right here. So all those little teeth is sitting right in between that sensor. Boom. And as it goes around, it is reading all of that. So that's able, how it's able to tell how many watts, how many meters you're generating and all of that. So we'll get that on there nice and straight again. On a little gap from the top of that pulley. Cool. Now, to remove the sensor, pretty simple. You just got three Phillip head screws, uh, three uh, Phillip head screws right here. So remove those three. Insert you a new one. Put those screws back in, and then you'll be good to go. So note this sensor automatically does come with a wire. So you will need to just pry this little staple up, pry that staple up, remove the entire unit, put a new one on, kind of hammer that staple back down into its correct hole, and then we'll talk about reinstall. So let's reinstall this bad boy. All right, let's talk reinstall. So first thing, when you go to take this and put it back together, let's remove these little plastic things. We'll put these on later. It'll be easier if you just remove them now. So we got the pulleys here. Now remember, if you remove these and they came out with it, totally fine, keep them with it. If they stayed in there, that's obviously even better. It will be way easier for you. Both of these um, cables run in the middle of these pulleys. So when I co put those back on, those cables both need to be in the middle. So for simplicity, I'm going to show you and take these out because it's a lot easier instead of trying to work with the entire unit without stuff falling down if you just do it one at a time. So on the side that I'm on right now, which is the side away from the monitor, that's going to be your low one. So sometimes you got to push this a little bit just to kind of auger out the top hole as you pull it loose. And then I'm simply going to put that, it always goes in the back hole. Back meaning closest to the front of the rover, closest to the tablet, the one furthest away from the seat, however you want to look at that. So I'm going to put it in the, set it down in that hole gently. And then that, remember, cable always goes in between the two pulleys. So that lower cable is going to rest on that bottom one. Now this top pulley, wiggle it a little bit, get it loose off that top board. And then same idea, it's going to go in the back hole, the one closest to the battery pack, away from the monitor up here. Put that cable in the middle of the two pulleys. And then this one, oh, almost forgot something. Hold on, there we go. The sleeve is going to go under, and this one's going to sit on top of your lower pulley that's on the other side right there. Cool. And they literally should be the smallest gap there. They don't touch, but if you push down really hard, technically they would touch. Now we're ready to put this top board back on. Easiest way to put the top board back on, you want to get this big one first. Usually you got to push that back a little bit just to get it in position. So I'm going to set it on top here. I'm going to push this big pulley back, wiggle it around a little bit. It'll fall into position. You can reconnect your cable. 
whenever you remember to. Doesn't have to be a certain process or a certain order for that. And then you're gonna get these top ones falling in. Friendly tap, everything's back in. Time to put in these two really long bolts again. There are set screws. So these little set screws, there's a line, hopefully you can see that line. There's a line on the top of this. That line should always be facing down. So what this is gonna do is this is actually going to sit up in, there's a hole right here. It's gonna sit up in that hole and then that big long screw is going to go in and it's gotta line up perfectly so you can actually um, get that to screw in. So, let's take a look. So I'm gonna hold it, line facing down here, if you can see that. There you go. Push it up. I usually just use my fingernail, technically. You could use a screwdriver as well to hold it up in there if you needed to. Back you up a little bit so you can see all this. All right, so I'm gonna slide the big long screw through here, front hole might need to push this board around just a little bit until you get it all the way in. There we go. I'm not pushing it all the way in yet. That would be too far. It does not allow me to get the screw in. So I'm gonna put this screw up. I'm gonna hold it in. Taking a five millimeter wrench, a couple turns of this until it gets locked in with that set screw. Now your first time doing that, that could take you every bit of five to 15 minutes. As you can see, that took just a couple of seconds, uh, but your first time, probably not gonna go that smoothly. So have patience with it. We'll do the other one, other side. The line is facing down. Get the Screw to run all the way through. Find the hole on the other side. We're locked in and loaded. Now I don't tighten these all down all the way. I keep them loose just a tad. Now it's time for us to put in our plastic pieces again. So this plastic piece it's going to sit inside this lip. So as you can see, we want this lip to sit on the inside. The water, little water rower logo is on the outside. I'm going to either push down on the top of this or I'm gonna lift from the bottom. Doesn't really matter which way direction you go. So I'll lift from the bottom first, push that in, and then I'll push down on the top of this. That's gonna get both of those in there. And then you'll hear it click. You pull it forward. Boom, clicked, that one's in position. Hit the other one. All right, those are in. We could also, while we're here, put in our top little plastic piece from where our rower uh, monitor arm sits. And that's going to simply go right on top here. Let's take a look. So this little rower plastic piece that holds the monitor. Just goes down in there, boom, and you can just hit it. And when we put on the hood later, we'll make sure we pry that up so the hood can fit underneath it. So all you gotta simply do is use a screwdriver, boom, pry that up just a little bit, and that hood can sit right underneath. So put on our front screws again. So let's take a look at these. We're back to the, remember, four millimeter. So we're going to tighten these down. We are good to tighten these down all the way now. And 
And as I tighten these down, that is my cue. Let this be your cue. Go back, tighten these up on the front of the rower. Boom, done. And now we gotta put the hood back on. So to put the hood back on, all you gotta simply do, see this big clutch sticking out right here in the middle. So right, let me get that rower monitor out of the way, right here, boom. We want to make sure that this sits down, it slides in. Now we can level it out. So you're going to see the notch for the monitor. And then this is where that plastic piece at the very front of the rower, way up here, we just want to pry it up with a screwdriver. And that way your rower hood can sit underneath it. Make sure it's in its front pockets. And we're ready to put the two handle screws back in. Always get them started just with my hand. I get them close to that bottom ledge. Once I feel it getting close to the bottom ledge, there we are. Now what you can do is actually lift the bottom of the tank. Let me scoot you back a little bit so you can see this. You can lift the bottom of the tank a little bit. Let me lower you just a little. There you go. So we need these notches to fit underneath there. So I usually just use my toes and I pull up. If you can see that move just a little bit, I just pull up on my toes. You could use your hand as well on the other side, but I'm gonna pull up on my toes a little bit. That's gonna allow me, and then I can push that plastic piece in as I tighten the screw only all the way down. And then this one, boom, you can see I push that plastic piece in a little bit. Tighten that down. And we are all ready. Boom. Gonna slide this back down into its little notches. Bring that handle back through. And we're back in action, reading properly. One way you can tell if you have a sensor or a sensor disc issue, let me quickly show you. Let's take a look at this monitor right here. Make sure you can see that okay. So we'll take it out of OTF mode. Remember, up and down arrow, hit okay, up and down. Let me reset back to zero. Now here's what we got. Take a big pull, get the water spinning, hold down power button, reset back to zero, let go. That should stay at zero. If it stays at zero, it is reading properly, correctly, all systems are good. If that was to start reading, so if I took that initial pull, it'll start reading again right now because I'm about to pull. But if I took that initial pull, reset, while the water is still spinning, if that was to start reading meters or watts again, then that means you have a sensor disc, a sensor wire, or an actual sensor issue that needs to be looked at. That's the easiest way to tell.